It's very important, though, for a company like our own to never lose sight of where its roots are. What is its home base? And if we're not providing value, at least for our own company in a place the size of Cincinnati, if we're not seen as a leader in that community and making that community a better place, well, we're failing. What form does that take? What form does the service to the community take? It varies. It goes from the United Way campaign, which you seek to be a leader in, to making contributions in a country like China for Procter & Gamble, where we've had the opportunity to build schools, 200 schools in rural areas, uh, to providing vaccinations in, in Africa, uh, to babies without the vaccinations. We know the mortality rate would be 50%. Uh, all this service uh, to the community obviously is premised on the company being successful financially and ideally growing so that whatever it's doing today it can do more of, both as a place of employment and contribution to the community. So I'm describing uh, uh, mutual stakeholders uh, that you owe service to. There is, a, there is an order to this, but it's not either or. It's not only doing two or three, uh, but it does have to start with meeting needs of consumers and being financially successful because of that. As CEO of P&G, I certainly have responsibility for doing whatever is needed to sustain and have the company grow. That would very importantly involve the, the right strategy, the right development of people plans, uh, the right portfolio decisions, which businesses are we going to invest more in, which less. Uh, which countries will we go to first with the greatest priority? Uh, who will we advance to make sure that succession takes place of leadership in all the key parts of the business? At Disney, I was the non-executive chair, and there I was supporting Bob Iger, a brilliant CEO. And my role there in the board was to have, be sure that the board was well aligned against the key roles the board could play, that we had the right committee structure, uh, that we had heads of the committees that were committed to it um, to help Bob personally because we had a great relationship in any way he thought I could in making decisions and there were times when I think I could be helpful in that. Um, other leaders as well. Uh, being CEO of the nonprofit, well that was a real doozer. Um, I mean my big challenge there was to get financial sustainability because we were in financial difficulty and make sure that the next CEO who was going to be full-time, I was there on an interim basis, would be a brilliant person who could carry it on for the next five to ten years. Those were my top priorities. And the financial sustainability required I needed to go out and raise quite a bit of money and get a strategically sustainable financial platform. More earned income, cut costs. We had to cut costs by a lot. In P&G, the key stakeholders clearly were, again, were our consumers. They're the people we serve. If we're not serving well, we're not going to have a business, period. Uh, it would be our employees uh, who have to feel this as a place where they want to spend their career, that they can grow in, that they're excited about most days. Uh, stakeholders, clearly the people who hold our stock, financial analysts who are going to report on their stock. And uh, we need to perform for them. And the community is a stakeholder, uh, which is depending on us and should depend on us certain ways financially, but more importantly, from the contribution volunteers can make. So that's really, uh, that's really it. And it's the right way to think about it. Who are the stakeholders? That's a blunt mechanical term, but what it's really saying is who are the people to whom we owe service and who by serving we can succeed. I was once asked what were the qualities of the best board members I've ever worked with, P&G or anywhere else. And I answered that question not by thinking of the qualities, first and foremost. Actually, I thought of who are the best directors that I've ever worked with. And then I thought about why did I pick them? What was it about them that made me choose them out of a big group? I picked maybe 15. And uh, the reason, as I thought about that, was very clear. One, every one of them approached this board role as if it was their own company, as if it was the only thing they were doing. It had nothing of a tincture of it, of being an extra sidebar activity. Second, there was an issue, or maybe two, that they believed in so deeply, they brought it up all the time. You just, you, you never go to a meeting without having Scott Cook, who founded into it, talking about quality. Or perhaps Lynn Martin, who was the Secretary of Labor at one time, talking about 
Are you really considering the role of women adequately in what you're doing? Or Ernesto Zedillo, who's at Yale today, talking about, are we doing enough in developing markets for people who don't have the income levels? So they made that. Third, they, they, um, they offered very direct counsel when a CEO needed to most have it. They'd come to a CEO and he could tell the CEO was thinking about doing something that hadn't quite reached the point of pulling the trigger. And they'd say, you've really made up your mind here. I'd encourage you to pull the trigger. Or if you have a challenging, controversial, big acquisition to make, they'd be the first one to speak up in a meeting and say, go do it. You're doing the right thing to provide that commitment, that encouragement. They have that. The most important thing I learned that was illuminating when I was chairman of Disney that I hadn't recognized quite as much on CEO is the importance of having the board spend informal time together to really get to know each other well so that the conversations they had could be as direct and informal and candid as possible. That's not to say that conversations that I've experienced on the P&G board weren't candid, weren't helpful. Uh, but on the Disney board, I thought we had really come to know each other and through some difficult challenges where we could really speak up. And people would say this and people would say that and they wouldn't be agreeing and it wasn't like people were sensitive about it. And I think I could have encouraged a greater sense of camaraderie and let your hair down through more social interaction or whatever it would take to achieve that.